Okay, and welcome students taking Math for Business and Finance and Math Applications. Um, we're working on the Chapter 11 Summary Practice Test Problems. And as always, I know I don't say this in every video, but uh, if you've been following along, you know that you can pause, rewind, um, watch the video a couple of times in order to, to understand the concepts. And if you don't, uh, for some reason, then feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor or contact us via email and we'll be able we'll try to help you out we'll try to help you understand uh, the concepts so that you can apply them to the problems okay so um let's let me get my pen here and next slide uh, is i included the uh, julian calendar okay and uh, we, we're down here to summary practice test problem number one and it says Oh, by the way, before um, there's only six problems here, but most likely I will end up doing two videos, okay, based upon um, what I had to do in the, the word problem. So, problem uh, test number one. On December 12th, Lowell Corporation accepted a $160,000, 120-day non-interest bearing note from Able.com. What is the maturity value of the note? Well, if it's non-interest bearing, that means the maturity value of the note is $160,000. Because we don't need to ca calculate any interest because it's non-interest bearing. So the principal is, or face value, is the mature value. Okay, so that was very simple. Okay, number two. The face value of a simple discount note is 17000 The discount is 4% for 160 days. So it's face value, the discount, that's the rate, time, 160 days. Remember the formulas, interest is equal to face value times rate times time. And for maturity value, it's face value times interest. I mean, plus interest, sorry. Okay, so it's asking, um, uh, calculate the following, the amount of the interest charged for uh, each note, the amount the borrower would receive, the amount the pay would receive at maturity, and the effective rate. Okay, so let's do A first. The um, the amount of the interest charge for the note. So we're looking at that formula. So face value is, is 17,000 times the rate, which is 4%, so that's 0 0.04, times the time, which is 160 over 360. Okay, so I'm going to do, just do all the math, 17,000 times 0.04 times 160, and I'm going to divide all of that by 360. So my interest ends up being 302.22. Okay, so this is 302.22. Okay, the amount the borrow, borrower would receive. Okay. okay, so that's, remember that this 4% is a discount. So if the face value was 17,000, and we're discounting it 302.22, the borrower um, would receive, let's see here, one six six ninety seven uh, seventy eight. Okay, that's the amount the borrower borrower would receive. Because remember, we're, it's being discounted here. This is not a simple note. Okay. Um, just to just to go back to the previous chapter, chapter ten, um, and just a little, you know, a recap of, of theory. Chapter ten is basically the same as this chapter. The only difference was was in the last chapter it was simple interest. So if I had seventeen thousand, if I'm borrowing seventeen thousand at four percent interest for one hundred and sixty days. You know, the interest I'm going to accrue um, uh, that I'm going to have to pay back is 302. So when I pay back the note on day 160, I'm going to pay back 
the 17,000 plus the interest that accrued, all right, or 17,302.22, okay. That was if you're paying back simple interest on a, on a simple loan. But when the note is discounted, okay, what ends up happening is, now, uh, before I go there, and I want to point this out, that we're talking about an effective rate of 4% interest, okay? That's with the simple loan. But now if we're discounting it, what ends up happening is, is we end up taking the 17000 okay, and the bank takes out the 302 22 takes out the interest first and what remains it you know the proceeds is um, how much the borrower would receive so they're not going to get the full 17,000 and by doing it like this even though it's we're using a 4% interest here the effective rate actually goes up meaning it's greater than 4% is what the effective rate that the the bank or whoever's doing the lending is going to get back um, because they're taking the 302 right up front. They're keeping that for themselves. Okay, so the uh, effective rate ends up being greater, and we're going to calculate that, and you'll be able to see that. Okay. Okay, so um, that's the difference, you know, between the simple in Chapter 10 and what we're doing here in Chapter 11, uh, you know, using discounting. Okay, let me get rid of some of this. Okay, so that was four. Okay, so um, the amount the pay the payee would receive at maturity ends up being the seventeen thousand dollars. Okay. And the effective rate, now um, remember how we figure out the rate, okay? Um, we don't have to remember the formula. All we do is say, okay, we're looking at, we're looking at this formula here, okay? And we want to figure out, you know, the rate here. So we set the rate as equal to, and in the um, numerator, we put the interest. And since we put the interest in there, all we're left over with is the uh, phase value and the time. So in the denominator, it's phase value times the time. Okay. And so we had calculate the interest at 302.22. And in the, uh, the phase value now is this 16,697.78. And the time is the 160 over 360. Okay. Now I'm running out of space here so the important thing to do here is, is remember um, that we're going to do the math in the denominator first. In other words we're going to take the 16,697.78 and multiply that by 160 and then divide that by the 360. Okay, And uh, we end up with in the denominator, we end up with 742124. Let me get that 24. Okay. And in the numerator, we still have our interest of 30222. So if we take our 302.22 uh, decimal 22 and we divide it by the 742124 we end up with, let me find a space here. I'm going to write it up in here, okay? We end up with 0 0.0407, right? And remember, that's a decimal, and we want to get um, the effective rate, which is a percentage, okay? Remember, that's a percentage. And it's saying round to the nearest tenth. So we have to first get the percentage by moving the decimal place to the right. So we end up with 4.07, and it's saying as a percent, and since we're rounding to the nearest tenth right here, we look at the 7, tells us to round up, so our effective rate is 4.1%. Okay, And now you see why I was going on 
about the difference between a simple interest note in chapter 10 and you know what happens when you discount a note because on the simple interest note the interest rate was four percent okay um, but the effective rate when you discount it is greater 4.1 percent okay so you know the bank is you know getting a, a more effective rate um, by discounting and taking out the interest up front okay and uh, you know that's just one of the quote unquote sneaky ways that they make money if you're not you know if you're not thinking about this you know you just you know they're just talking to you and you're going okay 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 you know i'm taking a loan for 17,000 well how come i only got 16,697.78 and they say oh well you know we discounted and we took out the interest first because you know we uh, we want to make sure that we get that money and then all you owe it left is the principal of the 17,000 right that you're going to have to pay you know at you know uh, when the note when that uh, note becomes due 160 days later and so therefore they got you know even though it seems like they've gotten the um their their 17,000 and the 30222 they actually get a greater effective rate because of having the, the uh, interest in their hands for the same uh, period of time okay so that was uh, number two and i'm going to stop here and uh, move on to number three in the next video